Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall be looking at another property of bounded self-linear operator. So in the previous video, we have studied that the spectrum of a bounded self-adjoint linear operator that is real, that we already have studied in the previous video. And we also know that the spectrum must be compact. This is the portion that we have covered in the starting of this course. Now let's see a more detailed result here. The result, it tells us about the bounds of this spectrum. We already know that the spectrum that lies somewhere on this real line. We have minus infinity, we have infinity here. This is the real axis. So they are saying that the spectrum would lie somewhere here on this real line and what is that uh, uh, what is the bound for this particular interval that is uh, given to us by this particular theorem the theorem here states that spectrum of a bounded self adjoint linear operator on a complex hilbert space h this lies in the closed interval the interval is given to be uh, small m to capital m this is the closed interval which lies on the real axis and here small m it refers to the infimum taken over all uh, all those axes whose norm is equal to one of the inner product of tx with x and capital M that is the supremum taken, uh, taken over all those x's whose norm is equal to 1 of the inner product of tx with x. So this is the theorem. So you see how uh, we have defined the, uh, the bounds for this spectrum using this theorem. We have small m here, we have capital M here and we have denoted both of these small m and capital M with the inner product of tx with x right uh, uh, the lower bound it tells us that it is the infimum of all those inner products and capital m that is the supremum of all those inner products okay and the proof of this theorem is also very simple let's proceed and have a look at the proof so uh, we know that the spectrum here lies on the real axis that we already know and we wanted to prove that the spectrum this lies in the closed interval small m to capital m right so what what do we do we take some element now this is a real axis right suppose here is some uh, here is the closed interval small m to capital m this one all those members which are lying here on this real line they are the members of this closed interval now suppose we take some member lambda which is lying somewhere here right so that means lambda would be greater than m and in other case, we take some lambda which is lying somewhere here before small m or after capital M. So we are taking these two cases. One, uh, in the first case, lambda is greater than m. In the second case, lambda is less than small m, right? In both the cases, if we prove that this lambda belongs to the resolvent set of the T, that means whatever is left behind is lies in the spectrum set. So that means all those elements which are lying here in the set would definitely belong to the spectrum set of the given operator T. Right, so this is the idea and here in this case we will prove only for the first part why because the second part is similar we just have to change the uh, notations and the uh, inequalities right so here we will prove that if we take some lambda which is greater than m so uh, that means we are adding something onto m which is some positive quantity right so we take lambda which is greater than m and we show that this lambda this belongs to the resolvent set of the operator t this is the idea here for that uh, what do we do we take some x which is non-zero for every x which is non-zero we can define the unit vector uh, v which is nothing but x divided by its norm so what would be x then so what is v? v is the vector x divided by its norm. So we can shift this to the left hand side because this is a scalar quantity. So you have x is equal to norm of x multiplied with v. So this is your x. Now what would be the inner product of tx with x? Why? Because we wanted to reach at capital a M. And what is that? That is the supremum of all those tx with uh, the uh, supremum of the inner product of tx with x where the norm of x is equal to 1 right so we start with this thing instead of x we, now we are writing this uh, norm of x 
multiplied with the vector v so here instead of x we are writing this thing now we can take this uh, outside the inner product this outside the inner product so we have norm x square in a product of tv with v right now this thing is less than equal to now obviously or uh, this uh, this inner product is obviously less than its supremum value and what is the supremum value supremum value is nothing but m we are calling this to be m right and what about the norm here now you already know the norm of x square this could be written as the inner product of x with x this is the definition and the properties of inner product with norm right so this uh, norm x square is written like this here right so finally what do we have we have uh, the inner product of tx with x that is less than equal to the inner product of x with x multiplied with capital m right this thing and or we could reverse the inequality by multiplication with minus 1 so we have this inequality right now using the squads inequality what do we have now this is the one thing that we have obtained here now using the squads inequality we have the norm of t lambda x multiplied with the norm of x that is greater than equal to negative of the inner product of t lambda x with x so you must go and check this quartz inequality what is this in your books uh, so we have applied this uh, squats inequality here we have the norm of t lambda x multiplied with the norm of x greater than equal to minus inner product of t lambda x with x so we can open up this t lambda here so this would be t minus lambda i so we can open up this inner product as well so it is this quantity i hope you know the algebra here right now using this result over here uh, this one so what is this minus the inner product of tx with x that is greater than equal to minus inner product of x with x with uh, multiplied with m so instead of this we will write minus m inner product of x with x and then we are taking common the inner product of x with x so we are left with minus m plus lambda here right and uh, if we call this thing as the constant c because m is a constant lambda is a constant so uh, we call this as c and here what is c c is greater than 0 why because lambda in this case is greater than m why because we have considered uh, lambda to be m plus some quantity c right so in this case this is nothing but c and we can write the inner product of x with x as the x norm square so finally if you see uh, we have the norm of t lambda x multiplied with the norm of x greater than equal to c times the norm of x square so if because x is non-zero we have considered this to be non-zero in the very starting so we can divide by norm of x on both sides so we have uh, norm of t lambda x greater than equal to c times the norm of x here so by the previous result uh, if we obtain this inequality whenever x is non-zero then obviously lambda belongs to the resolvent set this is a well-known result that we have studied so that means whenever we have uh, considered uh, in, in, in suppose this is the real axis and whenever we suppose lambda somewhere lying after this uh, quantity m here then that lambda would surely belong to the resolvent set same thing we can prove for uh, the lambda uh, which is which is smaller than this small m so whenever this lambda belongs to the small m then also it would belong to the resolvent set this is an exercise and you can try this part by yourself i hope you will get the results and the proof would is very similar to this one we just have to uh, change the inequalities so what we are left behind is this particular interval small m to capital m so that means whenever we have lambda lying between this interval so that is the uh, it would lie in the spectrum set for the operator t so the proof was quite simple and the result is quite quite important uh, so i hope you understood the concepts well that is it for this video thank you for watching